Well, I haven't ridden over here yet. Well, and it's been a this long, is different. It's a long time since we've been able to say the following sentence. Brand new Nissan Z car. The last gen was the 40th and 50th anniversary with the 370. This will be the 60th. It, I guess Maybe so. Maybe the 70th. It, who knows? We'll see what <laughs> happens. You're lucky. I'm, I'm amazed there is a new Z car, though, because okay. as long All as right. they milked the last one, I really thought sure. they're probably done. With the impending reality of everybody going EV or claiming they're going to go EV, makes me also wonder if this is a greatest hits car. The word doom is always after impending. Yes. When you use impending, it's always doom. Impen is next. It's not impending glee. <laughs> Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. TV, web, and podcast. This is Everyday Driver. Impending betterment. <laughs> okay. Impending okay, growth. Good. Okay, Impending good. Impending doom. <laughs> but I think it's a greatest hits car because they also decided to break convention and call it the Z. It's just Z. It that should means... be the 400 Z. Hey, I agree. Because what's next after this? If you mm -hmm. just do Z then you're kind of painting yourself into a corner you are, here. You absolutely are, which suggests to me that this will be the last one and then it won't exist anymore. I, nobody said that. I'm just theorizing. I'm also yeah, theorizing maybe. that because the styling is, let's see if we can reference every Z car prior I agree. on the current 370 chassis. Well, speaking of which, this is based on the 370Z. Mm -hmm. We all know that. Nissan has been doing so much with all their cars and trucks yes. to continue on with what they've got and many car manufacturers do this. This is not just Nissan. True, true. The 911 has done this for years. So <laughs> the 911 has made an entire lifetime of doing this. I mean, short of the C8 Corvette, where you wipe the slate clean, everything is brand new, mm -hmm. but it still references designs and concepts that were way back in the Corvette sure, history. Yeah. That's not what we're talking about. This is the Z that does reference and crib from the 370. And you can tell, as, for, as soon as you sit in this car, mm -hmm. You're looking at various vents and switches down here, and you're thinking, oh, that looks very familiar. Yep. But they've put a lot of development into changing the car, most notably the engine. Yep. It is a bomb under the hood now. Oh, my gosh, yes. It references your car, the Z32, as a matter of fact. It does. It's this only the second time in history it is a return to the 3-liter twin-turbo yeah. V6 Notably, it's the one out of the Red Sport 400 Q50, which we love that yeah, engine in that car. Excellent. That was a great engine hiding in an average car, and it desperately needed a sports car, rear-wheel drive, six-speed to be in, and yes. here we are. Yes. Boxes checked. 400 horsepower, 350 pound-feet of torque, it is, it, and you yes. dip into this, and you're gone. And because it's Amazing. a modern turbo. Now, my 300ZX has very similar power, very similar engine architecture. I was going to say. Very similar. Yeah. But what's different is my 300ZX from the 90s has no turbo, no turbo, no turbo, no turbo, all of a sudden. This <laughs> full torque, 350 pound-feet of torque from 1600 RPM, anytime you put your foot to the floor. That's fine. It's got, this has electric levels of power, that just constant that's, shove. Yeah, that's good, yeah. It has that kind of thing. And it actually sounds pretty good when you put your foot in it, but, but that kind of power that we're accessing there, anything above 1600 RPM, that's there. So it's not like you're learning the engine or you're building to turbo, it's just like yeah. we're either idling or we can have turbo now. It feels usable, and it's weird to sit over here because I've been driving the car and yeah. wondering, it sounds great when you got into it right there. It does it sound really good. really yeah. good. Yeah. And it's comfortable over here. It's still a GT car. It's still leaning more towards long distance cross country touring, I feel like, than it is towards hard edge sports car. And I can feel it just sitting here. Yeah, this is not a crisp, cutting edge, carving sports car. You can no. make it do it. But it reminds me, this is gonna sound weird, it reminds me of modern muscle cars where okay. they have a okay. lot of power and incredible suspension refinement. And when you drive them on a back road and you push them hard in corners, you're amazed at how well they do because they're doing better than you think based on the weight. This is heavy, 3,600 pounds. This is 150 pounds heavier than the last one, but it has big muscle car power mm -hmm. and it surprises you with how good its handling is because you're constantly aware this is big and heavy and not built to do this first. Yeah, I've been thinking about this car a lot. It seems like everything about the new Z is referential. Mm. Whereas when the Z32 came out, it was future. It was forward-looking. Yes. Nobody had seen a shape like that. And still, when you drive it, 
it still looks so good. It's the only Z that looks completely unique from the lineup, and they felt like they had to go back to that front engine long hood thing that they pioneered the 240. Yes. Which was a cool looking design in the 240, but the revolutionary thing about the Z32 was the fact that it was just like, what is that? I don't know. And everybody liked it. Yeah. I wish they had the blank slate capability here. They don't. They're reusing the chassis of the 370 that limits the things. And they've done a good job with what they had. I just want something revolutionary, not evolutionary in the styling. I agree. It's not just styling. It's architecture. It's how the mm. car drives. Everything is looking to the past, to yeah. all the generations. Yeah. Name it. 240, 260, 280, 300, <laughs> 300 again. You see it in the taillights. Yeah. Every generation is reflected in this car, yeah. which makes me think that you might be right about this is the last it's Z. It's the swan, swan song. And it's called Z, I think. I because think, then it's yeah. going to be the EZ if it's hybrid or it's full electric. Uh -huh. It's the EZ oh, no. and the EZ1 or the, the EZ. Nissan e or the, oh, no. Maybe, maybe. I kind of hope that they don't stop making this car because it's like the 911 or the mm -hmm. Mustang or the Corvette. Mm -hmm. This car just needs to be part of the sports car landscape. I'm thrilled that it is again and it's revised. It all amazes me. But it needs to change. Mm hmm. I'm glad they brought it back. I'm glad that Nissan is taking what they have and making something better. Theoretically, we found it in the Pathfinder, we found it in the Frontier, but this is the sports car evolution and they yeah. took a long time for this to get here. Yes. Look around it. I wish the headlights were just a single smooth shape underneath, but no, it's actually three lines with two radiuses. So it looks fussy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look finished. Going from the, the headlights, which are the signature move, and that squared off grill, the reason it worked on the 240 was because it had a steel bumper in front of the grill. Yeah. It yeah. didn't you didn't see that huge blocky rectangular shape. It had a nice bumper cutting it off. Then take the line just above the, the wheel arch, go all the way to the back. Whereas the prior 370 has had perfect spacing around the, those wheel arch yeah, cutouts. Yeah. These have some, you know, variable thickness fillets. Yeah, around they taper them. some, yeah. But this Longer nose on the same chassis, it's working, but this car is five inches longer than the 370. Yeah. Same wheelbase, five inches longer, and it's got those nice haunches out back, but then the cam tail. Cam back tail, cut it right off. Mm -hmm. It worked for so many cars, and it does look good, but you instantly see the Z32 reference in those taillights. Yeah. Every line, look at a shape. You'll see it on another car. You'll see, oh, that's where that came from. So that's why I say this car isn't future looking. It's Not at all. It's the best of every Z now in this car. Which is a, a tough task and, and you can almost feel like, you can feel the design department working underneath that and succeeding, yeah, yeah. but you can feel that they were told this is what it must look like and it must reference all these things and be sure you yeah. check every box. Of, I think that that's why the, they're making a big deal about the taillights. Because I think that was the only of thing car. they could put on the 240 shape and reference the 300 because everything else about the shape is different. Yeah. They're like, look, we did the 300ZX in the taillights. Look at what we did. But they did it well because my 12-year-old son, who of course has seen our 300ZX, when I, this car first pulled into our drive, he saw it from the back first and he went, oh, Dad, the taillights are like our car. He instantly got it. So that is working. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you one that I don't think is working. First off, it is that big square maw. I agree, but it's but, on the old cars. You see it on the old cars. But so that's it's the line it that comes up the center of the hood and then splits around the top that is right off the 240 and doesn't really have a reason to be here. And it looks wrong. It, it doesn't really go with everything else on the car. I, but that's not what this car is about. Mm. Okay, so jump to the interior. You see the triple pods on top of the instrument panel? Mm -hmm. On the 370, one of them's a clock. Yep. Great. But here, Nissan decided to not give you just turbo boost, but the turbo speed. You can see that your turbo is spinning up to 250,000 revolutions per minute. Yeah, it's 20, I yeah. needed to know that information. Mm -hmm. Everyone yeah. did. Because when you nail the throttle, that's what you're going to be looking at. Yeah, uh, yeah that's a lot of revolutions. Right. And I, I, I've never seen a turbo speed gauge in my life. And it has a, <laughs> it has a turbo boost gauge, which of course the 370 didn't have. Like that there's a turbo boost gauge, except for the fact that because of a digital dash, you have it duplicated here too. You do. So it yeah. actually is a gauge that exists twice. You could have some temps and stuff in here. You don't. Instead, you have uh, you have your battery, turbo speed, vitally important, <laughs> turbo boost, which is duplicated here. But we got to have the three pods, so there they are. 
Same doors, same poles, same vents here, but the rest of the shapes are relatable because they're trapezoidal and they're going to just age well. They're yeah, clean, yeah. nothing too fussy, nothing too out of place. You had to fit a screen. It, it feels natural. And it that's does. what I like about the interior. It just feels like we're integrating tech now and this mm -hmm. is what we've got. It's not overly fussy in terms of shape and you've got some good buttons. But look below that. These are the same gauges, the same the exact dials same HVAC from controls as the 370. It's that's the thing. Above the line, the seam, if you will, created by where the HVAC controls are, everything above that on just the dashboard, not the doors, is new. <laughs> yes. And they did it. And, and, and honestly, once you start to break it down and realize those are the pieces, they did a phenomenal job here with the interior. Agreed. Agreed. But they yes. very much said these are this is your workspace. It's above the HVAC <laughs> and just to the door seams. That's all we're changing. Everything else is the yeah. same. And they made it work. You can tell. It's like the bond line of a boat where the hull meets the <laughs> upper. It's like, don't change the hull. Just change everything else. It's cosmetic. You can kind of see it. All right. I'm excited to drive yeah, this. Yeah, you thing. need to drive it for sure. Look at the seat controls. They've changed. Mm -hmm. They've gone back to the side bolster of the seat. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing I noticed when I first sat down is the seat bottom cushion is about two-thirds the length that it needs to be. Yes. It ends on my thighs. <laughs> I still have a third of my leg before my knee. Uh, you're being generous. It's like half your leg is hanging in space. <laughs> I and can't believe this thing. The seat should somehow be lower in the car. It's, it's, I agree. It's not an electronic wanting seat to go bottom. Down. It, there's not much going on here. They're heated seats. I feel like, I, oh, yeah, this has to go down two more inches. It doesn't. This is as low as it goes. It's, it's a strange combination of the two dials for the fore and aft of the seat bottom cushion or, yeah. or just the level the of it. The lift of it, yeah. And then fore and aft is electric for the seat back. And I want to keep going back and it won't let me. Well, this car, like the 370, also has synchro rev match. Mm -hmm. And I've decided that even though it feels like you're compromising as a car enthusiast, it's the way you want to drive this car because you're not going to beat the electronics. Oh, that's fast. It's very fast. This thing moves. It sounds great and it is a missile. It's an absolute oh missile. Cow. I still think the suspension is too soft. And so when you turn in, it's similar in a lot of ways to that 370, but it's gotten softer. I feel like the redesign of the suspension has made it even more GT car than actual sports car. Different dampers, different spring rates, different yeah. sway bars. It's comfortable. It's comfortable. But it's but it too has, comfortable. It has body roll, it has dive, it has yeah. all of those things it's, that you don't expect on this car. The kind of thing that you can easily say, well, just spend money and fix all that. Well, this is $53,000. Yeah. This is the performance version. You do get the LSD, you do get the front and rear spoilers, but it almost seems like Nissan went more power with the car and therefore they had to deaden the steering a little bit because you're going to be just coming into a corner even hotter than you ever have been. Yeah. And they've now got electric power steering. It was hydraulic yeah. on the 370 yeah. electric power steering, which is actually information wise, I don't think much has been lost, but it does have a different feel and the whole car, it's been tweaked around the engine swap and yeah. not, not for the worse but it has a different feel that, that does feel like a bigger, more muscle car to me than the last one. You're right, and we've driven this in comparison to other cars, but if you just hopped in the, into this car and drove it standalone, hadn't touched anything else, you'd think it's pretty awesome. You'll be very impressed. It's yes. pretty good. Yes. It breaks down when you start directly doing the seat-to-seat -seat comparison thing that we love to do, mm -hmm. because you're looking, oh, that car does blank better, insert thing. Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with cornering. I want more steering feel, and I was expecting more. If we're gonna add power, I wanted this to become a sharper, more interesting sports car, but it's gone to GT cars. It's comfortable in a straight line. Mm -hmm. You don't wanna go as hot into corners because there's not information to understand what the chassis is doing. It's too soft for what I think most Z people are looking for. I think the turn-in is superb. I think the body control is not what it should be. It needs to be and it should, should a lot be better. More taut. However, then I start to think about who's the buyer, because I think the buyer here, a fifty thousand dollar rear-wheel drive, yeah, 
missile bomb of an engine sports car, that buyer is commuting in it in a city. Think so? I think that's the buyer. I think it's the executive who wants a sports car. And so you get some on ramps and you get some fun in a straight line on the highways. I don't think most of the buyers for this are going to be the canyon carving guy or even the track rat. I think most of the people buying this are going to be an executive enjoying himself in his reward sports car. And for that buyer, this is the right suspension setup. I suppose so. It's not the suspension setup I feel like the car should have, though. I agree. But at $53,000, adding tech and things like electric power steering indicate that there is a mode. You get to change mode oh, sure. to change a suspension mm-hmm. feel or change the steering or change the throttle input. And you get none of those things on the Z car. You only, it is what it is what it is. You get a sport and a comfort if you get the auto. If but in you the manual, only if you get the auto. It's just mode. But this is the car. It should be more hardcore. Yes, it should have I the agree. stiffer suspension in Where's this. Where's the hardcore setting? I, I guess see that. That's yep. what I'm looking for, yep. and it just didn't give me that. So you have to change your expectations when you're shopping Z car. Mm. See, rev match is good. You're not going to outthink the electronics. Well, this is a floor mounted pedal, and it's not the easiest to heel toe. So I think that is so the thing. Funny. And the synchro rev match is superb. Nissan was it a is. pioneer of it, and it's it is brilliant. still. I think it may be the best matching system I think out there. You'll have more fun driving it in Synchro Rev. This car also has double wishbone front suspension. Yeah. And you would think it would just be a refined, really sharp rock star in cornering, and it feels a little soft. It is. It it's is. good. I'm so glad the Z is here. It's just not all of what I expected. I agree. But, you know, at least we've got the new Z. Yeah. Mostly new, right? Well, we've got the, can we call this the 370.2? <laughs> That's kind of what it is. And then it will be the 60th anniversary as well. The 370 covered the 40th, 50th, and probably the 60th as well. What was wrong with 400Z? That was just cool. It would have been very cool. And I know it's uh, traditionally it's been the engine size, but look, it's 400 horsepower now. You could have gotten away with it. Somebody in the marketing department could write that paragraph convincingly. Well, if this was the 400, the next one after this could be the 500Z. That's sure. just like, that's a good number. That just yep. indicates a lot of good performance. <laughs> but I guess you're going to have to wait till the Nismo version of this, right?